Alright, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to install Active Directory on a Windows Server 2012 Release 2 server. And it's much simpler than it uh, used to be. Before you would install the services, um, you would add the role for Active Directory, and then uh, you would run command and you would do DC promo. But today, if you try to do DC promo on a uh, server 2012, you get this message saying that Active Directory dom domain services installation is relocated to server manager. So if we go ahead and go to server manager, which normally will come up on boot up, we would go to manage and then add roles and features. And you can skip this page, but if you have not read it before, it's a good idea to read through it. Then we click next. And we want to select role-based or feature-based installation. And we have to select a server to install the feature to. You may have other servers on your network that you're able to change. And it has automatically detected, of course, the server that I'm working on. So I'm going to click Next. And I want to select Active Directory Domain Services. Now, when we select Active Directory Domain Services, it says you cannot install this particular service unless these additional services are installed. So we're going to go ahead and say, add those additional features. And then I'll click Next again. And it'll show the different services and features that are going to be installed. And I will click Next again. And it gives us a little bit of information about Active Directory Domain Services. And I'll click Next again. And during the installation, once it finishes installing Active Directory, it will have to restart the computer. Now, if this was an actual production server that people were using and logged into from workstations, we would not want to have the server restart. In this case, it's okay to restart the server after the installation of the services. And last, we're going to click Install. Now, one thing to note about our virtual machines that we are using uh, for this particular lab, and keeping in mind, um, for those of you who are watching, um, we are using the 5th edition Lab Manual for Security Plus Guide to Network Security Fundamentals by Andrew Hurd and Dean Farwood. Um, and our servers are using a dynamically assigned IP address. Now, normally that shouldn't change, but if you do go from uh, host computer to host computer, meaning if I took these virtual machines and I moved them to another host computer, it is possible that these systems would get an, a different IP address. So under ideal circumstances, we would never run an Active Directory server uh, with a dynamically assigned IP address. We would prefer to have a manually assigned IP address. Okay, so the server is indicating that the features have been installed and there is some configuration required. And that we can close um, this particular dialog box. And I'm just going to check up here and see what notifications we have. There is a post deployment configuration, so we're going to click this task. So what the task is indicating is that we need to promote this particular server to an Active Directory Domain Services server. And we have a couple different settings here. We can add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a new domain, which is what we're going to do because we're basically creating a brand new, actually, excuse me, no. We're going to add 
a new forest. And really the root domain can be anything. These systems will not really be working on the internet. Um, so we could make the root domain something like ITS 341, whoops, ITS 341 dot, and we could call the domain Baker. So we're not going to use an actual internet routable uh, domain like comnet or org because we're not really routing this anywhere. So this particular server is called server, so it would end up being server.its341.baker. And I'm going to click Next. And it's going to ask about the forest functional level. Now what this basically means is, do we want to support older server variations? So if we make the forest functional level Windows Server 2012 R2, older servers would not be able to join the domain. Now, since we're not going to have any other servers, it's perfectly acceptable to use Windows Server 2012 R2 for the forest functional level. But if this were in a production environment, you actually had servers um, that were 2008 and older workstation types like Windows 7, um, Windows 8, or 8.1, you more than likely would want to select one of the older functional levels. You can always go up in the functional level, but you can never go back down. So that is something to consider. In this case, I'll just leave it as Windows Server 2012 R2. And it does want to know what the password is. Now I'm going to make the password the default that we've been using. Capital P at SSW0RD. And then I'm going to click Next. You will see this error message. It says a delegation for this DNS server cannot be created because the authoritative parent zone cannot be found. So what this basically means is there's no upstream server for ITS341.baker, uh, meaning that there's no such thing as a domain called .baker. So it basically can't get any information about a server up the stream and that's perfectly fine we'll click OK and go next anyway and it wants to verify the NetBIOS name assigned so it's indicating that the NetBIOS domain name will be ITS341 which is correct so this is not actually the name of the server but the name of the domain and we'll just leave that as the domain that's perfectly acceptable and these are the default storage locations for the database folder, log files, and the sysvol folder, all of which are a part of the Active Directory implementation. If we were using a SAN storage, um, it's possible we may install the Active Directory primary components there, but in this case we're not. So we're just going to leave these as the default. So I'll click Next. And it says, okay, we're going to configure this server as the first Active Directory domain controller in a new forest. The new domain name is ITS341.baker. And it'll also be the name of the new forest and the domain. And the NetBIOS name of the domain will be ITS341. And we went with Windows Server 2012 Forest Functional Level. And we are going to do a global catalog, a DNS server, and there is no DNS delegation coming from an upstream DNS server. And I've clicked Next, and it's going to do a prerequisites check to make sure there are any prerequisites that need to be validated, and if they're not installed, it would do that. Okay, so the system came up with three prerequisites. Um, but these are only cautions, so we actually could do the install. Uh, one indicates that Server 2012 R2 domain controllers um, can allow cryptography algorithms that are compatible with Windows NT 4.0. Um, if we did that, it, the encryption would actually be weaker. 
the other two items, uh, we have a non-static IP address, so we're using a dynamic IP address, and of course, <clears throat> down here, we cannot find any DNS server. We cannot find any DNS server to uh, basically get delegation from for our domain, which is fine. So I'm going to leave all these settings as they are, and I'm going to click Install. If this were a production server, I would recommend um, turning this setting off because we really don't want weaker cryptography algorithms set. And now we're actually installing Active Directory domain services on this particular server. Okay, so it was a sec successfully installed, and the system is in the process of rebooting for us, which may take a minute or two. This reboot, of course, uh, all depends on the speed of the system that you're actually running uh, VMware Workstation or Player or VMware Fusion on. Alright, so we're going to do Control Alt Delete. And you'll notice we are now logging in as the administrator of the ITS341 domain. And we're going to use the password that we set during the installation. And as usual, Server Manager will come up. And there are some other services that are not working quite correct. Uh, but DNS is installed, Active Directory Services is installed. So if I go to Manage now, <clears throat> I'm actually going to see some functionality, actually tools, I should say. Um, I'm going to see some new functionality like Active Directory Administrative Center, Domains and Trusts, Sites and Services, and Users and Computers. And for the Chapter 11 labs, we'll be using... Uh, users and computers to create new users. Uh, there are many built-in user groups already created, but we could create a new user and add them to any group. And there's many different ways you can do that. If I click, click Users, I can click New. And if I wanted to, I could create several different objects, but usually User or a Computer uh, is typically created or possibly a group. And I can make the user's name anything that I wish. And I'll click Next. And I'm going to set the default password. Normally the, pa the user has a change of the password at their first login. Uh, but I'm going to turn that off, and if you wanted to, you could say password never expires. Of course, in a production system, again, this is not advisable. And then I'll click Next, and then finally Finish. And my new user is down here, and I can actually right-click this user and go into their properties. And I can decide... Uh, what groups they're going to be a member of. Right now they're a member of domain users. Um, so let's try adding the user to a different group. Let's look at some of the different groups they have here. Um, they have domain users, which they're already a part of. What if we wanted to give them some other role? Uh, maybe they were a schema admin. So if I go back to test and then properties, and go to member of and add and if I type in the word schema and I don't really feel like figuring out the precise group name and if I do check names it'll automatically fill in the name there's only one group that begins with schema so it puts in schema admins and I can add them to that particular group and then I click OK mm -hmm.
So that concludes uh, installing Active Directory on Windows Server 2012 R2. And hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. Thank you for watching.